Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new Synology 1520 Plus. It's a brand new 5 bay that they have announced and released and very much following in the footsteps of that of the DS920 but serving as a follow up to the DS1019 and sort of the DS1517 Plus. It is a 5 bay that a number of you were quite excited about as was I and I've just made this video straight off the back of the review that I've just filmed. Unfortunately one that review is very very long and i'm sorry it's going to be coming next week that review but also the second thing it's over there right now you can just about hear it just off mic preparing the shr for some of the speed tests and software overview videos that we're doing soon so i thought while that does that and because the review is so long i'm going to do what i did before with our five versus five video i'm going to give you five reasons to buy the brand new ds 1520 plus and five reasons not to buy the 1520 plus but a disclaimer this is not the 1520 plus this is the ds1019 so like if you look at the port it's the old one i've got it here it's a little guidance throughout the whole video but nevertheless let's get straight into this reason number one that you should buy the 1520 is because it has got four lan ports it is a four port link aggregation and port trunking supported nas that means unlike the likes of the 920 and the 1019 like this one it doesn't have that limitation of 2 GBE even with lag. With 4 GBE opening the door to around 4 to 440 megabytes per second external speed, you can finally take advantage of some of those dry trays there with hard drives. With an individual drive in each of those and a good SHR, a RAID 5 or even a RAID 6, you're going to be able to get some great speed. Just bear in mind you are going to need a link aggregated support switch and on your connected device either have a shared 10G and 1G switch or your host system has multiple lanes as well. Reason number two that you should consider the DS1520 Plus is because it arrives with eight gig of memory. Now, the 1019 that came before it did have eight gig of memory, but it's worth highlighting that this here on this new one is of course, eight gig of DDR4 memory. So it is arriving with the maximum supported amount of eight gig. And if you were to look at um, a device like the 920, which knocks around for about 550 quid, including your VAT or your tax or whatever you call it in your own regions, if you try to buy a Synology 4 gig module, they do knock around for about 80 or 90 pounds, which I know seems a lot for 4 gig of memory. So getting one that's already got that memory pre-installed, or don't get me wrong, it is already at a price point of about 700 to 710 quid. But that extra 4 gig of memory will be incredibly useful for deploying the device very early doors straight away to you know full VM support, large scale surveillance support, taking advantage of the collaboration suite or doing all of them at once. Reason number three to consider the brand new DS1520 Plus is because of the 15 in the title. It is very, very expandable with two expansion ports on the rear. This device allows you to have five bays on its default model and bolt on five bays and five bays to get 15 maximum bays overall. And with each bay supporting up to currently 16 TB in NAS hard drives, and with 18 and 20 TB drives just on the horizon from Seagate there that feature MAHR, heat assisted magnetic recording, having a device like this that can support up to 15 drives in its lifespan is going to be very, very helpful. And also because they're five drives and it does connect via eSATA with that six gig connection, you're not going to lose too much performance there either. Reason number four that you should go for the DS1520 Plus is because of the CPU. Now it is the same CPU that's in the 920 and the 720, but it is still better than the CPU that's in this, the 1019 Plus, which is the J3455. And previous generation 5 bays all arrived with like an Atom. A couple of generations of Atom have featured on that platform. So it's great to see an Intel Celeron processor in these five bays and definitely in conjunction with that eight gig and that expandable architecture is something we're really pleased to see on a five bay because a lot of the uh, difference in the Synology portfolio that was two years ago, the problem was that you had these two kind of parallel systems. One that was a Celeron based system that had like 4K and 1080p, basically a transcoding and graphical supported engine. And another platform that was using a moderately rudimentary CPU by comparison. And that's now amalgamated into a far more fully fleshed out 5 bay with those four LAN ports. Reason number five that you should go for the brand new DS1520 Plus is because this one much like the 920 and the 1019 before it, they arrive with NVMe SSD caching. Now, that isn't to say that they are unique. As mentioned, lots of the newer generation Synologies all have NVMe SSD bays. But what I will say is 
The NVMe's on this in conjunction with those five storage bays will be far more beneficial. The more drives you have, the better the caching can do with that larger storage array. And although you do get performance benefits of larger numbers of drives in any given RAID array, from RAID 0 to RAID 5 to SHR, RAID 6 and more, I will say that SSD caching works better when you've got more memory to play with and more hard drives in your RAID array to add that speed boosted performance and IOPS benefits that SSD brings to the table overall. But of course, it's not all good. The 1520 isn't going to be for everyone. So here's reason number one that you shouldn't buy the 1520. And that is, it's really similar to that of the 920. It's got the same CPU. And although it doesn't have 8 gig of memory, the 920 comes with 4 gig of memory that you can upgrade in its lifespan. Yes, the... Uh, 1520 has got four LAN ports there in the rear and it's double expandable. But if you're not going to utilize those features and functionality, you may be buying something that you're not going to use. You're going to be buying um, upgradability and future proofing that you may never need. And some of you are happy to spend an extra 150 or so on day one and have the opportunity for those later down the line. But if you don't think you need it, you may be better set going for the 920 plus, saving 150 quid that you can plow into your hard drive storage media. Reason number two that you might not want to buy the 1520 plus is that price tag. 700 quid or around again, 710, 715 if you shop around. That's still not going to be great for a number of you. It's quite a lot of money. That is the, you know, we're coming up to three quarters of a grand on the hardware alone without your storage media. If you do install four 6 dB drives, you're looking at between 80 to 100 quid a pop per drive. You're going to be breaking into a thousand very quickly. And on top of that, with the SSD caching we mentioned, that does that up your budget significantly. And if you are buying a device for its hardware, there are better ways to spend 700 to a grand and leverage your money away from storage, have fewer hard drives, and put it more into more proficient CPU, some Xeon, some Pentium, some i3s, that sort of thing. And that's one of the things. That price tag I know isn't for everyone. Reason number three that you might not want to buy the DS1520 Plus is that those LAN ports, though there's four of them, which is great, there's still one GBE. And I know a number of you are still not exactly bowled over by the fact that Synology's 20 plus series for the most part have all been one GBE. There's been a few upgrade cards on the 20 plus series and the 1621 XS hopefully coming soon features 10 GBE but the DS 1520 plus is four LAN ports all at one GBE. Now there's a lot of reason for that. Obviously keeping things more affordable is very key although they maybe could have looked to 2.5 GBE which is becoming surprisingly profitable uh, uh, surprisingly more affordable I should say and the second reason being that CPU only has a finite number of PCIe lanes that it can play with so I can imagine a lot of that has been leveraged towards the PCIe um, slot dedicated to the NVMEs inside probably more than the LAN but that's a chipset and CPU uh, distinction there I think they can't really grow outside of that. But still, nevertheless, one GBE isn't really for everyone. Reason number four is, although it is a new 5-bay, and I have compared it against the DS1019 Plus and that of the DS1517 Plus, quite a few years old now, that three, four years, it doesn't have a PCIe upgrade slot. And once again, that does come down mostly to reasons of that chipset and the CPU and the lanes it can dedicate. But even a lower-end PCIe slot might have been nice. Maybe giving people the option of choosing between NVMe SSDs or choosing to add another improved network interface card. Now, again, there are reasons because the PCIe slot you find typically in a lot of Synology devices, they've had to leverage and play around a lot with the PCIe lanes of that CPU to allow um, the NVMe is to really get some good performance without allowing you to just install the card. And of course, the combo card and the individual cards from Synology are all PCIe Gen 3 times 8 which I think is going to push that Celeron chip way beyond what it can do within this configuration. But still, as a 5-bay, when you look at the 1517, it had 4 LAN, it had PCIe upgradability, and I think a number of you would have liked to have seen PCIe upgradability on this device probably more than those two LAN or more than the NVMe SSD bays. But that's a flexible point for a number of you. Maybe not going to be the buying distinction problem that you have. Reason number five that you may not buy the 1520 Plus is because of those NVMe slots only being for caching. Now, 
Synology have been real steadfast about this. They do not want NVMEs on their systems to be used currently for anything other than SSD caching. They've got a great system there, both in DSM 6.2 and DSM 7 on the way and its improvements towards that of SSD caching within that system. But I'm still not avoiding that the a lot of you want to use those NVMEs for raw storage. There's even hot fixes you can find on GitHub and stuff like that where people have managed in a slightly dodgy way, I'd say, to allow those NVMEs to be used for raw caching. But what you find with a lot of those is as soon as you update your system, a lot of the patches you make will cease to work. Um, and also, once again, and I'm sorry to be laboured about this, the PCIe lan lanes that are open to that CPU, a lot of them are dedicated to pre-existing parts of this system. But even if you were able to enable PCIe NVMe SSD raw storage access, you almost certainly would not see the 1800 to 3000 megabytes per second that you hope for because of that processor. But this has been our five reasons to buy and five reasons not to buy the new Synology DS1520 Plus. I hope you enjoyed this video. Do stay tuned for my review coming very, very soon. But I thought I'd knock this quick one out here. And hopefully, I say, sure, it's got to be about 10 minutes now. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Do check out the link in the description to NASCompares.com where we go through a lot more information about this and update lots of the bits and bobs about this now is for you guys and of course visit the guys at span.com 25 years in the biz and know what they're doing and they can help you out click like if you've enjoyed the video click subscribe to learn more i'm gonna have a lay down i will see you next time